Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Ricardo Oliveras, coming in for the second time. You're our first repeat guest, Ricardo. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> I guess I guess they you like me or they like me or <laughs> Yeah, I mean your your episode I think was one of the most popular so far. We we had one that we've aired since then and by the time this will come out, I think there'll be like like a dozen more that'll be there. Um, okay. By the way, for our listeners, Ricardo is a NASA program manager uh, with an engineering background. So really intelligent, technical guy, a lot of awesome stories under his belt. And, and it is really good to have you here. I mean, you're one of the more fun people to hang out and talk to in my life. And I like having you on. <laughs> Thank you. I, I enjoy uh, doing these, uh, these podcasts uh, two on, under my belt now, right? So. Well, you got you got one point one. One point one. <laughs> yeah, that's true, right? <laughs> Not until this one's done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I'm just taking around. Another, another hour. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, I guess. Uh, what's been going on since the last time you came in? Any anything new in your life? Um. Well, you know, uh, I would say. I guess we could talk about how um, this whole COVID has affected the projects. Sure. So, so my project in, in general, right? Um, we're now finding out that our very aggressive schedule um, is, 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 is it's taking a dump right now because, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you know, I guess it, this has to do with the fact that nobody was, you know, most most people were not working, right? And and then all of a sudden they open up, or we open up, right? Yeah. And now we need parts, right? Yeah. Parts that were readily available. Oh, yep, are yep. No I've been seeing this at work right? as well. <laughs> Silicon shortage. Yeah. One of the uh, things, uh, uh, just just actually just today, this morning, um, our schedule got pushed back, pushed out. Possibly about three to four weeks, which is a huge hit. Um, turns out that we need some parts that also the companies that are making the vaccines need those parts as well. Ah. And then guess guess who t- <laughs> who's the head of the line? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Probably the vaccine company is given the, uh, the current. Yeah, because you're yeah. biological. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, you know, COVID is is now hitting us with a, a double whammy uh, for us because you know we're now having to, I, you know, I don't even want to say compete really because it's not really a competition. <laughs> I've know? been there, man. They, the irony when I was trying yeah. to make face shields and give them away in March of 2020, um, uh-huh. I couldn't get material because you know other people needed right. the same material to make face shields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, you know that's uh, that's what we're, what I'm dealing with right now, and just trying to figure out, you know, what parts do we have in stock, um, you know, and you know what parts can we, uh, you know, you know alternate parts that we can have, you know, so it's kind of scrounging for things, so, uh, and uh, you know it's just uh, adding more time to the schedule. Yet, you know, our um, our rocket is not going to wait for us. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, and it's that not one of those sense. things like the bus. Yeah, it's not like you know one of those things like the bus, right? Where you can run behind it and start yelling, you know, "Hey, come back!" <laughs> they don't know how it's fast that thing gone. goes, but I'm guessing mock something or other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> much too fast for us. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what I'm what I'm dealing with at this time. Oh, jeez, um, man, that's rough. You know, it's just, yeah, it's it's one of those things that uh. You know, we, we have seen scarcity in some parts, it, it, you know, in, in many of my projects that, you know, you know, back in the days, right? But nothing like this where it's just uh, one after the other, you know. You, you can't even you get STM32 and, chips right now, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I know, was talking to someone on the phone the other day that's paying $180 a chip uh-huh. for those. Usually they go for like 10 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have... Um, trying to think here what part it was um we oh we have these uh these heaters that we use um and they're little little tiny heaters um that essentially keep our um our culturing system warm you know body temperature and 
we were getting them for, uh, if I remember correctly, somewhere around twenty dollars. Yeah, it's not bad. They went up to, yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty pretty good. Um, but now they've gone up to a hundred and ninety five. <laughs> Is it the same seller? I'm guessing this is like a secondary market you're looking at now. Same seller. So this Jesus. is the same seller. That's crazy. And man. they're you know their their response is that cost of parts has gone up and uh, also by the way scarcity of parts. So you know seller's market. Um, yeah, and then so you know it it they're being hit with with the you know uh, they, they can't find parts right. So then that puts my schedule even further behind. So then. You know, I say, well, okay, um, can I just pay extra for you guys to, you know, push it ahead of the line, right? Of course yeah. you can't. But now I'm looking at 200 and it's essentially almost $100 more per um, heater. Jeez. So now we're looking close to $300 for <laughs> a heater that was one time 20 bucks. But, make, right? I mean, but you got to so, pay it. Right? How many do you need for your build, can I ask? Oh, we, we need, um, it's a small amount. Um, we need a about about 60 of them 60 you know yeah so that's not but, nothing though i mean that's i'm, I'm bad at math yeah. in my head but yeah well you know six and, times and, three and plus a zero <laughs> yeah and, and the because of the cost, 18 grand this, this yeah that's what yeah we're looking yeah. somewhere around there plus shipping and all that right so um it's it's one of those parts where it was not even on our radar in terms oh of, yeah as uh, a line item cost right <laughs> Yeah, it's just a line item, you know, twenty dollars. Well, yeah, but a minor price. line item, I would think, and now it's something that you yeah, notice. super minor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, so um, you know, it, it the cost of the whole project has not gone up because of that, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, can know, I ask what your the, uh, total budget is, just uh, to put it in perspective? You don't have to tell me, obviously. I'm just curious. Well, so so. Well, I'll, I'll give you an idea of, of what the cost of one of these culturing um, systems is, or, or at least, you know, so we have a bank of 10 cassettes on there. Okay. Um, before all this, we were looking at about $17,000. For the whole thing. Per, per, per cassette. Per, okay. Per okay. little Got cassette. Got it. And we have 10 of them, right? Um, this was before COVID. Um at this point, because the numbers are changing so fast, right? Um, you know, I don't even want to look at what the cost for, <laughs> for, one, for one of those. So is, the heaters, not. the cassette is a self-contained experiment, and the heaters are external on the rack that maintains the cassettes. Yeah. So, so what we have is we have a, um, you know, what we call a flow path, right? And uh, it's essentially it's got a warm side and it has a cold side. If you think about it, um, it's kind of like, you know, the way I think about it is a refrigerator, right? You're, you're at home, yep. you know, you, you warm up your food, right? And then you also store your food, right? So we've got yeah. a cold side. And you warm the air food. when you store your food. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. So, so this, this uh, flow path here has a cold side where we have all the food for the cells. Um, and it's just stored oh, there clever. for when they need it. Yeah. And then on the warm side is where the cells uh, reside, and that's really you know, clever. What I call what I call their microwave, right? You know, <laughs> we warm up their food, right? <laughs> so, that's awesome. So yeah, so on that side, it's it's thirty seven degrees, you know, uh, body Celsius. Temperature, right? Okay. Yeah, Celsius. Yeah. Got it. Um, and so uh, so th so that's what you know, kind of in you know, simplified form. That's what the the flow path is. Um, we have the cells on the warm side with their food, uh, and then on the cold side we've got the you know their, the food that they will need for a later time. And then you have some kind uh, of a pump. That, yeah, so within that, correct. So within that, we we have a pump system that pulls in the cold uh, food, warms it up, and then we were able to feed it to the cells. In the microwave. Um, yeah, in the microwave, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, from there. You know, of course, the cells, just like any living uh, being, you know, has waste, right? So from there, we, we pull out the, 
with the, this pump system, pull out the waste out into the cold side as well. That's How do you segregate do. the excrement? Because that seems very difficult to do without um, pulling single cell organisms with it. Yeah, it, it's, it's essentially just flushing out the whole system um, without flushing the cells, right? Because how the do you, cells are actually... The cells are not that big though. Like how do you keep those behind and, and yeah. get their feces? So, so what we do is um, they're actually, the cells are growing on a bioreactor. And the way the bioreactor is designed is that all that waste, all that, um, you know, all the waste is essentially goes through this one tube um, at a, a low pressure so that the cells can stay on the bioreactor and continue to grow. But we're just pulling out um, the, uh, you know, the leftovers, right? The, the you know. <laughs> so there's <laughs> the like a membrane that that's like only certain size stuff can pass through and, and the leftovers is just smaller than the cells? Yeah, yeah. So we hit, yeah. So the bioreactor has fibers on there, which is where the cells grow on, um, and they, you know, it's it's we have different sizes, but um, you know, it, it essentially keeps the cells on there um, and keeps them from getting flushed out, um, and they they grow oh, in clumps cool. too. So it so it's helpful. Yeah, right? and so, so they, just those fibers are what hold them in place and keep them from being excreted. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah, it's the fibers, and then also the fact that they actually clump up as well. Um, and, and, and actually, does that actually work for, cells will... oh, sorry, I'll oh, wait, I was going to say, does that, <laughs> does that serve the dual purpose of removing dead cells as well as excrement? No, no, no. Okay. So, um, we actually, uh, it, we pretty much, you know, of course the scientists have more knowledge than I do on this because they're the ones looking at it, but we pretty much end up with, um, cells that are alive and and dead as well, so we're able to see those, you know, and they don't get flushed out. Um, it, the other thing too is that the, the cells that we've been working with, they they actually need to touch so that they survive. So, you know, um, this was like a very, uh, you know, amazing thing to me, and just kind of like mind blowing. Yeah, it's kind of cool to me, right? Where. You know, at the beginning, I was working with this project, and I thought, you know, cells, right? We're building, we're culturing them, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm more interested in the mechanical part, right, the engineering aspect. Uh, when I learned about these cells, how they grow, uh, what they need to survive, and, and, um, and one of the things was that they needed to touch each other. If they did not touch each other, they would die off. So that was, like, just... Interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wait a minute. Is like, that for warmth? This, Is mean, that like it's not psychological because they're single celled, but could it be um, reproductive? Um, I I'm, I'm not sure. I you know that's that's a good question. Um, All good. It's, it's definitely not for warmth. Yeah, it's not for warmth because uh, you know. It, it, that 37 degrees Celsius is throughout the whole bioreactor. And okay, so no that makes sense. If yeah, if they were by themselves, they would see that that same temperature. Um, but that is a good question. I, I think it, it has to do with, you know, chemically. Okay. Right. Um, uh, kind of like humans, right? Like we need to have touch from other humans as well. Yeah. Although this uh, last year, not... <laughs> <laughs> it's been rough you know, for the single exactly guy like, like myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, uh, yeah. try... <laughs> <laughs> like one of those movies from the nineties where the person's pretending to make out with themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, so that to me was a very, um, kind of a, a very, you know, believe it or not, it was, it was actually a kind of a very, um, uh, tender moment, if you want to call it, you know what I mean? Just, just the knowledge that you could actually see that at the cell level as well. Yeah. And that they, these cells, they know if they're alone, you know, um, that it's, time to die off pretty much you know yeah Whereas if so it may together, not be technically they, psychological they but it kind of mirrors that phenomenon correct correct right right yeah. so you know and, and you think about the humans right the, us humans need to be touched as well or we for sure we do yeah it's humans, highly unhealthy right? not to be yeah yeah, yeah. And, it, and it you know and it comes from the cellular level it's not just us being us you know I mean it's uh, you know the, the, our cells need it right you know so yeah um yeah, so it's 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 a lot of uh, interesting work with with that. That's so, fascinating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're scheduled to launch next year. Um, you know, things are moving along, and and you know, we we're having a whole. Can lot you say more when the launch is roughly? Uh, I mean, I know those get delayed too, which would be it sounds yeah. like a godsend at this point. 
<laughs> it would be, uh, yeah, at this point, you know, essentially what I can say is next, uh, this coming summer, not okay. this summer, but summer of 22. 2022. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I hope it really, I really hope it stays in the summertime. I don't want to start going into, you know, uh, the winter time. <laughs> when I worked at SpaceX, I was so excited. I, I only did an internship, so I wasn't there for very long. Uh -huh. But I was so excited for a SpaceX launch party because I think in the early days they were just crazy, you know, like they oh, yeah, strategically that, yeah. placed fridges of champagne. And it got the launch yeah. I was supposed to be there for got delayed, and it was very sad. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, that's what that's what we've been told. Um, you know, the launches now are are not. They're so routine. No I mean, why would they that. do that anymore? You know. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's still. Um, it's still, you know, they, they still have a, well, I don't, okay, I don't know about this year, but in the past, they still had a, you know, what I would call a get together, but it, definitely not from what I've heard, what, you know, what it was before, which was a, a, like a big, debauchery, you know, big old gala. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm hoping that it stays for the summertime because, uh, you know, we have to go out to Florida and, um, you know, maybe maybe I'm a I'm a sick man, but I, I like the warm, humid weather as opposed to cold. <laughs> you uh, live in weather out of Florida. I mean, I, mean, I guess it's kind of cold in the Bay Area sometimes. I mean, all right, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. You live yeah, in California, right man. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> I know exactly. Right. I live in know? Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, right now it's what it's 61. What is it like? 61 degrees out here. So Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, well, that's not, yeah. I kind of, so me, maybe I'm a little bit of a glutton for weather pain, at least relative. I, I like 61 and cool more than I like like 80 and humid. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, it, it all depends what. Or 61 and dry, doing, I should say. I guess. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is It is nice to have the dry weather here, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I, I certainly wouldn't necessarily love, you know, 80, 80 uh, percent humidity or so or above. <laughs> Yeah. Every day, you know. But. I mean, even when you go to like Arizona, when you step off the plane, right? I mean, I feel like it's it's like a buck twenty, and it's probably less than that. I'm exaggerating, but it's, you know, like a buck <laughs> ten. And um, you get off the plane, and you feel like you're stepping into an oven. But you're like, I mean, at least me, I'm like, at least it's at least it's uh, not humid. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, um, when when we go out there to Florida, um, you know, essentially everything gets shipped out over there. Our Got it. experiment unit, our engineering unit, um, everything gets shipped out. You know, every, I mean, it's, it's a long list of items that get shipped out. It's, it's sometimes it's mind boggling because you're, you're moving, you're moving a whole operation out to Florida. That's cool. From here. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, in the past I've, uh, I've had the envious job of, of, putting together that list of things that we need to send out there. you're not in charge just, of it now uh, you, you got someone else to handle it yeah somebody else is, is taking but i'm, I'm guessing that you still have to put stuff on that list like everybody probably gets yeah. access to it right yeah yeah so yeah i mean at this point you know i definitely have input on what needs to go out there uh, but i don't have to uh go and get the equipment for you know nice for for for, for the shipping right so um that's the, that's the good thing uh, because, you know, so I, I've done the list and, and many of us have done the list just kind of a, um, it, it's kind of like a uh, introductory <laughs> to, to the pain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, put together this simple list, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, new guy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, don't worry. It's easy. <laughs> Yeah. And by the way, if you it's forget anything, itself. the whole mission is scrubbed. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. Have fun yeah, with that. Know, and, and that's a, yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, um, uh, if you, you know, if you miss something that's just a tool, then you can go out there and purchase it, right? Because you know, it's not like we're going to the moon, right? Uh, nonetheless, if you forget an item that's um, that's kind of a specialized item that we've designed ourselves, yeah, and it's not out there. You know, somebody really, really needs to move fast to get it back out there, right? For so sure. I'm guessing have, overnight yeah. priority and if not, well, I mean, that's, yeah, overnight priority is faster than a courier if you're going cross country. 
So, right, right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, typically what we do is we'll leave one or two team members behind. Smart. Um, specifically because we expect that we're going to miss something. Just because You always do. I mean, items. I shouldn't say you. I always do. Yeah. Like, there's always yeah. one little thing. <laughs> if you're doing something yeah. complex, I mean, if it's simple enough and it's only one Pelican case and you've checked over it, you're probably going to be fine. But if it's yeah. anything yeah. bigger than that, I mean, I don't know, at least in my experience, something gets forgotten because right. you're doing so much. Yeah, well, and the thing is also is because this is space flight, right, and, and it's, um, um, you know, astronauts are going to be around this, this uh, experiment, uh, we need to have even, you know, if we purchased a part, even say uh, capped on tape, right? Um, yeah, you know. which is a thermally resistant tape that you can have near a heating right, element. Right, right, right. So that capped on tape, uh, you know, you, you could order it online uh, no big deal but what we need is we need a certificate of conformance as well so so you know along with the hardware we also have to have documentation that makes sense i mean if you're sending it to provided, space right? yeah you you want to buy stuff that's qualified right right so so in you know i in this last last time i think we forgot a particular size of capped on tape now you can order it right but because now you need all these certificates, it's going to take a little bit longer, um, you know, or, you know, or they might not even, you know, depending who you order it from, you know, they might not be able to provide that to you. Of course. So yeah. You Amazon's not giving you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won't. <laughs> so in that instant, right. It's like we called back and say, Hey, we, you remember that cap on tape? It's not here. <laughs> you need it here by tomorrow, you know? Got to be so, the exact role. <laughs> yeah. So this was, um, yeah, this, this, this was, um, you know, in that instant, you know, we had two people back here and so they knew where it was. They, you know, they're part of the team and you're not asking somebody else from a different team to come, go and look through your equipment. Right. So, um, they were able to get to us within a day, you know, um, so those are the moments where you need somebody back here when the whole team, most of the team is out there. That um, makes a lot of sense. Florida, right. So, um, yeah, so, so typically that's, that's what we do. Um, but when we go out How there- How do you pick those people, can I ask? Or is it, is it just depend? Um, it, it depends on the, uh, you know, what that, what, you know, what the different tasks are for the different people, right? So if, if we have enough people that are specialized in the work that we're gonna be doing out in Florida, um, then we can afford to leave one behind um, back here uh, at at, uh, at Ames. Um, otherwise, it's it's sometimes just the you know the tech, the, the tech that you know that st stays back and and you know um, he has he or she has intimate knowledge of our equipment and our you know what we have. In, in, yeah, because if it's just some rando, then you can't guarantee it's going to be the right roll of Kapton tape, for instance. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, or, or if it's, you know, if it's a, you know, a higher up boss, you know, he, he might, <laughs> he might not have any idea what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably a good thing, right? I mean, they don't necessarily need to know that, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's true. Right. You know, so, um, um, so that's, as long that's as it gets there we, and you finish it, like, you know, they're not going to care either. Right. It's not, yeah. 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 No. So that's, that's how we kind of pick that person. And it kind of happens, you know, it happens every year because the, some of the team members will change out. Right. So, um, that, that's how we, we kind of, um, pick them out. That makes sense. Uh, and then once all the equipment arrives over there, then we need also a person to check in all the equipment, right. Make sure that everything arrived and, and, uh, make sure that, you know, whatever is missing, is missing because we left it back here and not because it's, you know, somewhere in the UPS truck or so, you know, which, which has happened in the past. Yeah. We, we had a shipment of a custom part get just lost by FedEx. I think it was the day someone got shot at one of their facilities. Oh, so our, our vendor used that as an excuse, but yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, kind of makes sense. And yeah. we ended up not needing it cause we ordered duplication. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah. Do yeah, you, and, you, and so sorry, um, I'm listening. Uh, no, so, so what I was going to say also is that, um, in in order to, 
if it's like a brand new project, so when this project that I'm on first started out, what we did was um, a facil facility trial run, which is essentially um, you bring out the whole team to Florida as a trial run. It, you're not performing the actual experiment, but you are going through all the steps that you need to to make sure that, that you know once you're done with this facility trial uh, run, you understand whether the you know one are the labs appropriate, is the equipment that you thought that you were going to use appropriate, um, are the people that are involved, are they the right people as well, and what are our weaknesses are right, um, so. So this when is with first start a project. astronauts that are going to launch with the equipment, or no? This is this is just the engineering team, engineering and science Got it. teams. So so when a project begins, and and this is not always done because it depends on the size of the project and visibility and all that. Um, but when a project is first started, uh, you know, if if there is time, right? What we'll do is we will run through the whole project. And this is kind of a project that will be ongoing for two or three or four years, right? It's not something that's, if it's just a one time, then we, we usually don't do this. But if it's um, like this project where we've had it, you know, four or five years now, um, it, the, the, first, the first mission is actually a trial run. So you go down to the facility, um, and this is fly everybody to Florida because you have to go through every step, however, you know, Make sure that um, we understand all the weaknesses and strengths of, of, of our procedures and, and so on. And so the first time we went out there, um, we performed everything minus the launch, right? So we, course, we mimic yeah. the launch. So is this know, is this a trial we, load in? So you're, are you or are you running the experiment? We actually run the experiment, okay. a, a, a very similar experiment, not not the exact same one. Um, but something that mimics of what. So you have to build happening. a duplicate experiment then when you're right for that. Okay, right, right. makes sense. Yeah, um, and so we go out there. We we go through all that up to the point of of launching. Right, um, of course, there's no rocket waiting for us, but we do go through each step, even to the point of delivering the 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 hardware over to the launch team. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so th it's a very. Um, it was it was very stressful when we did it because nobody had done that for this particular project and so you know you're finding out all the issues with it and better so the, to do that the in, team sorry i was gonna say better to do that you know in a trial run than live right oh yeah 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 um and and it's especially useful whenever the team is new also if the te team is relatively new that's also a reason to do it right you're training because them. um yeah you're training them yeah you're training the team um, and it's useful because at the end of this trial run, you come up with this list of uh, things, you know, where, where things went wrong and where things went right. And you're able to address those so that when the actual mission comes, then you don't make those same mistakes. It's um, awesome. You'll, you'll make other mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I do it too. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, kind of, so getting back, so, so we fly everybody out there, you know, everybody's excited about the experiment and so on, you know, and then we're going to see the launch and everything. Um, and then we arrive there and, and then it pretty much hits you, you know, the amount of hours you're going to be working there <laughs> to try and get this going. Right? <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> but you've, you've been that's, with NASA that's... like 17 years now, like it, you haven't, it hasn't sunk in yet. Like you, you still find yeah, yourself. Yeah. That's... Well, you know. You that's know, sobering. For, for that's me, good. it's yeah. For me, it's it's um, you know, and, and like I mentioned last time, right? So I've been with different teams, right? Different yeah. groups. So I won't. I haven't been doing this for seventeen years, um, you know. So, but for me now, with with these missions, you know, I have more knowledge and like you know, um, not as naive as the first one, right? That makes sense. But, but the first, yeah, first you're constantly one, I was learning naive. if you're doing research and development in any way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of surprises, right? So this last mission, we flew everybody out there. Um, things went, you know, somewhat flawless. You know, they, you know, we had some hiccups, but nothing major. Um, and so uh, what did happen was that 
Um, you know, leading up to the experiment, uh, you know, everything's scheduled, right? So they, they tell you um, at this time, we will have the launch team come over and they will take the hardware from you and we will take it out to the launch pad, right? And so they give you a time and a date. Um, and, and essentially, you have to be there, otherwise the launch team cannot be waiting for you forever. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so, yeah. So, so we got our schedule, we, you know, everything was working out and, and yes, you know, we're good to go. We, they give us a date uh, and, you know, and then we start a clock countdown of when they're coming by, you know, so that's kind of like the first, you know, one of, one of the milestones that we have to hit, right? So we're, we're counting down and we're just finishing up everything. Everything's going well. And at the five minute mark before they arrive, <sighs> um, two of our, our cassettes are not working. They're not what? responding. They're not responding. Yeah. They're not responding to our uh, commands. And so, you know, at, at this point, you know, all hands on deck, right? The yeah, whole team is there trying to fix or trying to figure out the issue. And, um, you know, and we've got five minutes, right? So it's like, what's going on? So, you know, we go through our procedures, you know, it's the software, well, the software is working well, you know, it, it's got the right command. So it's, you know, it's, it's not that, right? So then we, and then we have the, the, the team, the engineering team that's looking at the hardware, right? So everybody's just kind of communicating and going on all cylinders, trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, um, sure. And, you know, science at this point is not worried because there's also biology in these cassettes now, right? So if they're not on, Somebody you're not cooling these cells. You know, yeah, you're cooling the cells and uh, that's now going to have an effect in the experiment. And so, you know... Die or start it, growing, it, I guess it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so engineering now has the scientists looking at us like, come on, guys, what's going on here, right? You know, so... Um, it's just, you know, they're breathing down our necks, you know, and then you've got the launch team waiting for us, um, or at least, you know, coming for us, right? They, they don't even know there's a problem at this point. Um, <clears throat> and so we finally, <laughs> we finally figure out what's going on. And it, it turns out, you know, at about the two minute mark, it's just some pins that are bent, right? I think you might have told this story pins. to me already in another podcast, but I still did, want to hear it because it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did, I, did I mention the same story? You know. may have, but it's, it's still a good yeah. one. <laughs> so, but, but anyways, let's yeah, go so through I'll, it. Yeah. I'll make it quick. So, so, you know, at the last minute is when we fix this problem, right? But, but the stress of this whole, um, um, you know, this whole time, right? Not only just those few minutes, but also just the, from day one when we arrived, at the end, I mean, it, it just feels like you've been drained, you know, like this fog just hits you, right? Like, it's just yeah, like, of course, how do you I feel though when you anymore. solved it, when you, when you got that pin in? Yeah. Right. Like, right. Yeah. What, what was, what was so, the, what was the feeling? Oh, the feeling, uh, I mean, you, you just, saved it, right? Like you got it, you got it to go. Like at the last, I, I think when you yeah. told this before there were, there were a few people trying to do it and then one person got in, I can't remember if it was yeah. you or not. But someone yeah, was yeah, able. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so you were able to yeah. insert the thing, and then you could yeah. you could launch, and everything was working. How did that feel? Uh, I mean, you know, when you see this thing launch, right? Um, after all that you've gone through, you know, which, you know, it, and it's kind of hard to ex you know express this in just a, a story, right? It, yeah, it's, sure. It's very different, you know, being there in the moment, right? Um, and even me working on this project, it, you know, it, it, I didn't feel it until we started launching these that it's like, whoa! I wasn't expecting these kind of feelings, but it's just this feeling of just accomplishment, right? It's yeah. just like, well, man, I just did something pretty big, you know? Um, <laughs> That's awesome. You know? <laughs> the only reason I bring it up is I've, I've had a few times in my career when I, I was given an assignment or something went wrong in a way where I didn't know if we would succeed. And, and I might've even thought we wouldn't, get, we wouldn't, you know, or I wouldn't, or my team wouldn't. And, I feel like when you're able to, to sort of make it through one of those, like at least for me, it's a feeling of just, I guess it's hard to describe. You're right. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's joy 
because you overcame something incredibly difficult that you didn't know if you'd be able to overcome, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's almost right, like an yeah. adrenaline rush, but not really. Like, it's, yeah. I don't know. It feels, well, it, feels really it's, good. It's like, yeah, I mean, I would say it is kind of like an adrenaline rush, but it's also a crash, right? Because then <laughs> you're like, just, <laughs> you're just drained. You're like, I think I'm going to retire now. You know? <laughs> 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 you know? And then it hits you, right? I've got another one coming, <laughs> right? So that's awesome. Um, yeah, you know, so it, it's it's um, yeah, it's 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 a it's an awesome feeling, uh, when when this when you know when when your experiment takes off, right? Um, so, you know, I I imagine that many people feel like that in in even other areas, you know. Yeah, I mean, I haven't in orbit right? yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I was just trying to interpolate and understand, you know. And empathize mm -hmm. all yeah. three of those things yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i imagine it's it's probably uh very similar so um yeah that's that's kind of the uh you know in a nutshell that's kind of the the work that i'm doing and you know kind of the feeling that i i get from it right you know that's awesome um yeah just working there you you know or i have to sometimes remind myself that it's like it's super unique work, you know, because after you start doing it for so, for so long, right, uh, or for a while, yeah, you start seeing that as an everyday thing, you know. Yeah. Well, my dad said to me when I was a kid, this is weird advice for a kid to get, and I'll probably show my white privilege oh. here, but he said, uh, you know, Spence, <laughs> when you buy a Ferrari, my dad was a surgeon, so he's like, Spence, when you buy a Ferrari, <laughs> for two weeks, it's just a Ferrari. Uh, it's a Ferrari. After that, it's just your car. Right. It's yeah. A, right. It's got to be like that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got to keep reminding yourself it's a damn Ferrari. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's not just a car. <laughs> yep. you know? So, um, yeah. So, yeah, because because then after a while you're ready to move on to something else, right? <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So, you know. Um, so that's kind of the technical work. Uh, the other piece of of my experience there at NASA has been uh, taking leadership programs. Um, so I've done those uh, while at the same time, you know, performing these projects, right? Um, although one of the program, actually two of the programs, um, I did take some time off to, you know, to do that program and actually um, had to get away from, from all the work that we were doing. Is this uh, like because uh... of the is this a program that you yourself enroll in, or are you helping promote other leaders within the organization? And no, it's it's a program that so uh, these programs uh, that they have certain programs they you're you're pre-selected so cool um, either your management or um, maybe somebody higher up than your management uh, will promote will actually select you for this for this program. Um, How does I've that always happen? wanted to. Yeah, I know that's. I've always wanted, well. Because I've seen so, people on those tracks at company. I never knew how the selections occurred. Like if some execs just yeah. walk in the floor, you know, or officer or whatever, and says, that guy's real leadership material. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, or woman, that guy really you know, yeah. a lot of help. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't promote that one. Nah, nah. Yeah. Smoking a cigar. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've always wanted to find out, like, how how were we selected, right? Because, the, you know, I still have that curiosity, like, was it because I was doing a great job or somebody saw a, a bright future for me or, or, or this guy just needs a lot of help, you know? <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> you know, what is it, right, you know? I mean, you're um, charming for sure and you're clearly adept. I mean, I would think it's a combination of, of soft and hard skill, right? Like. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is, um, so so in these okay, so in these programs, so so you get selected, right? And and it's very few people that that go to these programs. So to give you an idea, um, each center had anywhere from two to at max five to seven people from the center. So the and senator the picks centers, you. What's that? I, I heard senator, but maybe I'm wrong. You said no, center. No, I'm no. sorry. Center. Center. Okay, my bad. So Center. two to five yeah. people at NASA Ames were selected for this, and you're one of those. Yeah. Well, two people at NASA were selected, and that was one of them for, for that wow. particular year. 
Um, and then the other centers that are, that, you know, they're a little bit bigger, they can have up to maybe five people or seven people. So, um, so if NASA is a center, what are the other centers? Uh, so, so NASA Ames is one center. And, okay, that's have, what I thought. I was just making sure. Ames, yeah. Got it. Yeah, and got then it. you have Houston. Yeah, and, yeah. And Kennedy. so on, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kennedy, yeah. Um, and so at, at, our, at my center, it was, I was one of the, the two that was selected. Um, and then once you're selected, you are to fill out an application, um, write an essay. Uh, they look at, you know, what work you're doing. Um, and... But this and is after you, you're one it, of two, then you have to qualify in that way? Yeah, then wow. you have to qualify in so that how way, many, right? You, there's just one person at the end, <laughs> I would think. Yeah, so, so then, so once I did that, then I get interviewed by my management, right? And, and my management helps out in, in that as well. Um, and so then at that point, then I get interviewed by, um, see, I'm trying to remember. I got interviewed by... Um, our, my division, so a higher up manager, right? Uh, they interviewed me, and and they, you know, they start deciding is this the right candidate from our group to go out and, and try and, you know, get this position, right, or, or get this, you know, get into this program. And once all that is done, then you get to the center level, where the uh, director, the center director, uh, and his team will now interview you and that other person. And, you know, they'll, they'll look at different, you know, things, right? And, and like say that I, I don't know what exactly they look at, you know, um, but you def, you know, I definitely had to do an interview with them um, and, you know, just talk about the work that I do and, and you know, where I feel I'm going and, and so on. Um, and so it's not until that interview that they select one person at, at Ames because wow. there was only two of us, right? So at that point, they, they selected me and that's incredible at that point yeah i mean it's it's yeah it's it's a that's, huge that's why accomplishment I would, i'd like to know yeah, yeah i'd like to know why why was i selected <laughs> <laughs> they never told you you um, never asked like you couldn't ask like i i asked but they 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 don't say that's like part of the program like yeah, you know, I, I guess you got selected you know just be happy with what you got no. <laughs> right <laughs> don't ask any questions <laughs> so, but yeah, you picked me um, because i asked questions <laughs> yeah. Right. inquisitive yeah you know. yeah. yeah so so then um at that point that's when that's when they present us to the uh program uh, managers right of, of this particular program this leadership program um, and they say, here's the person that's going out for Ames. And so, you know, you end up representing the whole center wow. for that, for that year. Right. Um, and it's, which year was this? Can it's, I ask? uh, this was, uh, 2017, I want to say. Congratulations. I mean, that's, that's mistaken, awesome. Yeah. I know this is old news now, but I just, I, we've never talked yeah. about this. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so. So at that point, that you know, once once we, we get to that, then you know you're now part of the program, and you know you start receiving tons of emails of what's going to happen and so on, um, and they fly us to different uh, NASA centers uh, for different um, training, and this is you know the kind of training they give us is is um, you know making sure that we understand who we are, right? So so the number one thing is. Understanding who you are will help you understand others and be able to um, allow you to be in diff you know, different difficult situations and be able to maneuver and not, not fail. Or if you do fail, right, be able to get back up and, and continue, right? So, nice. And that's who um, you are as a NASA representative, as an individual, as a technologist, all of the yeah, above? Yeah, right, right. All of the above, yeah. Okay, cool. And, and so, yeah, and so you're mixed with... Uh, once you go to the different centers for these um, these trainings, you're mixed with engineers, with business people, with um, HR people. So you know it, it's a whole mix, right? From different um, NASA centers, um, each center has its own culture uh, that you have to maneuver with. You know, uh, sure. um, among excuse me. So um, and then you know in my case, right? I, I'm the only one from Ames, so like I need to. I need to make friends with, with others, you know, because yeah. you know, everybody else has, 
has at least three people, yeah. five, seven, right? You know, so uh, you know it's it's um it's it's a real interesting um you know situation that 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 we all are put into, right? Um, and one of the things they do is they stress the hell out of you. Um, that, so that's part of the project, right? Smart. The, the program, excuse me. Yeah. To stress you out, yeah. um, have you make decisions under stress, um, and then, you know, go back and, and understand what mistakes you did or, or what, how could you have handled it a whole lot better. That's awesome. Um, I mean, it probably is then, a little bit difficult to go through, but I would imagine you come out really, really well prepared for the real world. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it. you know, every day... You know, and we we start early, right? So we start at, um, you know, seven in the morning. You know, sometimes six thirty. Um, and these programs they include. Which means you're waking up at um, five. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> or if if you're West Coast, you know, and, and you're flying out to the East Coast, it's <laughs> you're waking up three hours earlier. <laughs> oh jeez. Right. And you're yeah. starting the first day you get there. It sounds like you don't have like a day to transition. You're just going oh, no. to. Yeah, it's the it's the first day. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. It's the first day that that it all starts, and and it's funny because I was looking around. And I'm like, are there cameras in this room? Are they observing us? See how we Probably. perform, you know? <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, we end up with um, therapist there uh, during that that time. Um, you know, trying not to say too much because um, you know, if if there's other NASA people hearing me, then. You know, they, they, if they go through the program, we're not supposed to say exactly how things are, right? But yeah, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to get you in trouble. Finish. We can edit out this if you want it to be. Oh no, no, no! It should be fine. I'll be, I'll be vague. I mean, you know. Cool. But um, you know, we'll have, you know, you'll you'll have therapist there, um, to help you cope through the whole process. Um, you know, we also have uh, nutritional coaches as well. That's awesome. Um, because that because this also includes exercise, right? So, in these programs, uh, you know, when you know when we're here in California, because they all traveled here also for one of the the events, um, we went out into the Santa Cruz Mountains and just went hiking. Nice. You know, um, yeah, it it was kind of a we're here, come back at this time, and it's just a you know it's it's a mental. Um, relaxation being out there in the forest and just even then being out there in the forest you're trying to you're learning about yourself and the the other people as well right for sure uh, because <clears throat> they don't assign the groups you end up kind of falling into certain groups right um they also perform assessments on us as far as how we behave in certain situations um uh, you know you know why we behave a certain way and you know how can we cope with it um, it's funny because it's a fascinating program i mean that sounds so intricate and involved and and just thought out oh yeah 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 it's it's very the people that put this together i mean it's just the amount of time they take is just amazing i mean it's like you know uh, i i thank them so much because the the value in in this is huge it's not just just for your uh you know, for your career, right? But also even as a person outside of, of work, right? Yeah, I believe um, it. <clears throat> yeah, and, um, you know, the, the assessments that we have are pretty in-depth and, and they go, you know, they give you the good side and the bad side of yourself. So, you know, that's part of the reason why we have therapists there too because, you know, they will crush you. I mean, it's just like, you know, they'll turn you into mush. Like, no matter how strong you think you are, they'll just turn you into mush and um <laughs> the therapist there to build you back up it sounds like correct they, they yeah. build us back up afterwards right and um you know with with some of us it was a little bit harder to to break down <laughs> 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 but but when they did you know they and they have different tactics to do it um, that's incredible you know, because everybody is different right uh so it, it was it was interesting the tactics they had to use on other people versus what they used on me. Interesting. Um, so it's like highly personalized. And, and it, it sounds like. Yeah, it's it's very personalized. Um, it's you know the the therapist they have is not just one person, right? It's 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 several people, um, and 
each one has their own methodology of how they one, break you down. So the therapist is adversarial, you know? but also, you know, like on your side afterward, it sounds like. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, like my therapist was, uh, you know, initially, yeah, yeah, I'll stay out of this one. <laughs> but the, let's right. just say I had to, I had two therapists, right, that um, had different ways of, of going about it. Um, and so, um, you know, I was finally broken down. I've got some stories down. for you after this as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was finally broken down. Then they helped me come back up, right? They rebuild me again, right? Which is just a, it's an awesome experience. Um, I remember one assessment that we took. Um, it was on, you know, part of it was, was understanding your competitiveness or lack of competitiveness, right? Um, whichever way, Interesting. Right? Um, and so we took the assessment and then they said, in this room, you know, if you're at, at this level, we want you to go to this corner, <clears throat> you know, and if you're at this level, we want you to go to this corner and so on. Right. And so, uh, you know, we, we take the assessment and, you know, the group of people goes out to that corner, another group of people goes out to that corner and I'm kind of looking around and I'm like, <clears throat> um, where are the people that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> That, that are supposed to be in my corner. They They're just like, isolated you. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> and, and there were there were two of us, right? Yeah, that almost and sounds so like that was by design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we're looking at each other and it's like, we are very different to these people. And then they say, you know, um, on average, this is what, what you are like. Um, when you go out into the world, right? Percentage wise, this is what you're like. Um, and, you know, and, and then of course, you know, the spotlight is on those two, two individuals that are kind of off on their own, right? You know, and they're like, and you guys are the kind of different ones, you know, oh, God. <laughs> you, know? And, <laughs> you know, and then they ask us, you know, like competitive wise, right? Like, can we see your, your, uh, your graph, right? And, and I'm not kidding you, my competitiveness was, it was off the charts. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and, you know, nice. at first I'm thinking like, you know, at first I'm thinking like, yeah, hell yeah, you know, I'm <laughs> super awesome. competitive, you know, right? You know, but then you, you start, they help you understand that that's not necessarily a good thing. In, yeah, in I was breaking curves right? all through like everything, like, and only recently I think my right. ego is kind of taking a back seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know, so, so in, in that situation, right. Um, you go from this thing where you're like, yeah, I'm a badass, you know, like there's only two of us, you know, <laughs> to like looking around like, and going, I don't think this is a good thing. You know, <laughs> maybe I'm kind of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, so, um, so yeah, in, in that assessment, right. So they, they help us understand, you know, where our competitiveness is coming from and how can we take that and actually, you know, take that and make it an advantage for us as opposed to a disadvantage, right? Because, it, you know, being competitive can be an, adva an advantage sure. or disadvantage, right? And, yeah. And, I you mean, know, if, if you're you in do a team awesome setting, stuff. Yeah. If you're in a team setting, like, and you're just completely competitive with everything, it's like, you're not going to have a team, you know? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> right? and I made that mistake so often, like... I would say more like academics than in my career, but maybe even in parts of my career, like earlier on, like I, I would, I would be competitive to the point where I would tear the team apart and it wasn't a good thing. Yeah. And it, right, it took right. a lot of yeah. introspection to get past that and be able to work with other people and, and get good at it right. and start to embrace it. Right. And then become, and you're yeah. one of the most humble people I know. You're so down to earth. So for you to tell me that story, I mean, I, I feel closer to you than ever. <laughs> it's, just, it's a cool thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, you know, and, and and I'm I'm still very competitive, you know. I mean, I've had people mm. tell me, you know, it's it's not a competition, and it's like, uh, yes, it is. It's a know? competition. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Did I hear you, hippie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but but you know, it's these programs like this that that you know, for me, right, have helped me to, to understand how to use my competitiveness, um, and, and make it something that's. Uh, advantageous not just for myself but also for my team right 
uh, because at the end of the day, you know, I don't, I don't care what people say, but you, you don't accomplish big goals without a team. You just, you just don't. Correct. You know, I mean, hundred percent. You know, um, yeah, you know, you, you have, you know, you have Elon Musk, right? Oh, and he, thousands of people supporting him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tons of people, right? You know, yeah. you have Elon Musk. It's, it's, he, he's only been able to do this because he has tons of people, a team, to help him out, right? Because for sure, you just, you know, you, you just can't. You know, you might be able to accomplish some things, but the big goals that you want to accomplish, you need a team. You need support, uh, you know, uh, from a team, you know, whatever that form may be. And so that's something that, you know, that we have to understand in, in leadership, right? Yeah, that absolutely. That your team is, is um, number one on there. And, and, you know, you have to understand your people, right? You can't just For sure. it's all know, mow them down and... Yeah, you, you can't just mow them down and say, you know, chew them up and throw them away. You know, that's that's I think an issue that some I managers do that. I think I've made that mistake as a younger manager. But you're absolutely right. right. You right. have to you have to be there for people. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing, right? When you're younger, you know, in my younger years as well, right? I've gone through all that, right? Now I understand it, right? Uh, I know that people have different needs, um, you know, different and, motivations, you know. I heard a Correct. story That's from somebody that I, I work with where they had um, an engineer that was just getting really bitter on their team and, and just kind of, you know, just wasn't satisfied, you know, and they finally got the person down and said, you know, what will it take to keep you here? You know, and they said, I, I want a new laptop. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted a faster <laughs> laptop. That was all it was. <laughs> Right. It's like yeah. one of those things you yeah. never figure out, right? Is it money? You know, do you want, do you want promotion? Yeah. Like, right. Like, oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the thing is also is, is trying to understand when somebody has an issue, right? Um, because not everybody's able to express their frustration in the positive way, right? So um, I, I think as a leader, one has to be able to, to go to those people and find out what that frustration is and, 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 and why, right? Um, because I've, I've worked with people that are able to show their frustration in a very positive way, but then I've also seen people that, you know, Follow just, it up. Yeah, they, they, well, they'll hold it up, hold it in, or they'll just, just explode right there, right? And, you know, to the point that they, they piss off other people, right? Yeah. But, you I've know. experienced that a little yeah. bit. Like sometimes where it's like a kid throwing a tantrum and you're like, this is a grown human being. Like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. And then in those situations, uh, I feel that one has to understand that, you know, everybody's going to express it in a different way. Um, you know, they've learned to express their feelings in different ways, right? Some in a positive way, some in just a you know, negative way or, or, a, or a different way. Right. Um, and it's up to leadership to understand um, those frustrations and um, help that teammate, um, you know, move forward and, and help out the team, right? Uh, and in terms of motivations, right, as you mentioned, you know, you, you have to understand how people are motivated or different people because not everybody's motivated by money. Not everybody's motivated by a single piece of paper that says, yay, you accomplished it. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for some people, yeah, for some people, that's all they need, just that paper that says their name and they accomplished this. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, you know, if that's what they need, then, you know, you know, we, we can provide that. Right. You know, um, <laughs> if you need more, if you need more money, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Nonetheless, you know, we can try and figure out what we can do. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's 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 everybody has different uh, motivations. Right. And so. Um, so this program, you know, it, it helps us to understand all of this as well as try and give us um, habits that will keep us on a positive side of, of, of life, right? Um, and moving forward um, and also being flexible, right? Having that flexibility that if, you know, you're, if, if you fall down and you get kicked and kicked and, you know, and just beat up, that you're able to get back up again and, and continue forward, right? Um, as opposed to just kind of dying off, right? So that's beautiful. Um, and and actually, one of my um, one of my mentors, uh, we, because the other thing that we have is we have mentors too that we talk to, uh, 
you know, almost is that assigned or is that organically formed? No, they're, they're, they're assigned. So based Got on it. your profile and that, that person and their knowledge and so on, um, they're assigned again. How are they assigned? I'm not sure. I've always tried to figure that out. But, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I'm always trying to figure things out, right? Well, that, I um, think that's probably one of the reasons they picked you. I mean, that gives you an edge. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's always trying to figure things out. Um, yeah. So, um, so this particular, so, so the mentor that you know, we were talking to, um, and and I was in pretty bad, uh, you know, in that moment I was in pretty bad situation in terms of of, of environment, right? And she said. Uh, I'm trying to phrase it here correctly. So, so she said, you know, sometimes the uh, there's nothing wrong with the sapling. She says, you know, um, what is wrong with it is the dirt, the sunlight, the environment is not correct for that sapling. Um, so you can't just leave that sapling there and expect it to grow in in a bad environment. You know, there's no water, there's no sunshine. That's perfect for. A mushroom maybe you know or, or or you know some other fungus right but for that particular sapling that's not the right environment and she says you know you have to be able to take that sapling and move it into the right environment and that's how it's going to grow you know um so you know she put it very beautiful right you know sure you know essentially saying that you know yes you you know as a person you have issues and you have things that you have to work through but it's not always just yourself you know the way you are that is keeping you from growing it could possibly be uh, the environment right so everything has to be somewhat right right so your environment has to be right um, your mindset also has to be right for you to be able to grow right otherwise if anything is off right it, it, it's not going to happen Right. And so you so, you know, you have to, along with people that could help you out, figure out what is it that's not allowing you to grow, uh, you know, in the direction you know, that, that you want to. Right. So, um, you know, so those are the things that, that we we were given in those programs. Um, and it's just, a, you know, uh, an, an amazing program, you know, because it's very complete um, and, you know, it, it, it gives they give you a lot of time to think about yourself as well. So which yeah. can be extremely draining uh, at times. And, I would imagine at, though, like day, that's something you're always going to have, man. That's right. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, those skills, I use them every day, you know, it's, uh, as a person, it's changed me. Wow. You know, a lot, you know, uh, not, not that, that I am perfect, perfect at all. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> you is. Know? If, yeah. And you never will be yeah. and neither will I. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> We, we strive to be perfect, right? Of course. I, I, I think if you're, if you care, if you're passionate, you do. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and um, yeah, yeah, but, but it's, it's one of those things where it, it allows you to be able to take in input from other people, you know, whether it's good or bad, right? Just think about it. What this person just did or said about you, what is true in it, right? And how can I improve from, from what you know, they're talking about, right? And so... Uh, as, opposed as opposed to taking the attitude of like, yeah, this, this person, person doesn't know me, you know, they know nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or thinking, you know, like, oh my God, I'm so bad, you know, you know, so, um, but, but taking that information and becoming better, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 so, so, so you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been, you know, at NASA I've done technical work and then also like, say, just full development of, of leadership, which, uh, like say it's it's just been you know uh, helpful. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't my... know about that at all. I, I appreciate you sharing that. That's really really interesting. Yeah, they they don't mention these programs. Um, uh, you know, you, even even if I go on the web, it's it's hard to find <laughs> these programs. And that's like because I remember when I first got accepted, it's like, what did I just get into? Like I need to figure out <laughs> what are people saying about this, right? <laughs> you know. Um, and it's it's hard to find any of that. Uh, part of it because, um, you know, we're asked to not give details, uh, mainly because it's uh, not only because it's personal, right? But but also because each uh, year or every other year that they bring in uh, 
employees into this program. It's only every other year that you they know, do it? Yeah, well, now I, I don't know what, what's going on with the program, but yeah, it's every other, it was every other year. Um, um, so, it, and it varies depending on funding and you know, who's in charge and, and so on. Um, but what they want is when we first go into the program, they basically want us to be naive and just, you know, it's, it's, it's. And if somebody blew the lid off on the internet, then it wouldn't really have the same efficacy. Right, right. Because what really what they want us to do is to go in there and be ourselves. Because really that's the only way that we're going to understand ourselves, right? So if we go in with this hat of, I work at NASA and this is how I'm supposed to <laughs> behave, right? Then, then you're not really being truthful of who you are, right? You're, you're being, you're, you're acting the way you've been asked. You think you're supposed to, act, to, right? to, to pass the test or whatever. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You, you think you're supposed to act that way, right? Um, and so, you know, you, you have to be vulnerable in these programs and, and that's what they want. You know, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So cool. that's, that's kind of a, a leadership there at, at Ames, right? Or that's NASA awesome. in general. So. I think that's that's a perfect note to cut on, um, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's a really cool story. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna end this. Thanks for coming on, Ricardo. Anything you want to plug while you're here? Like any any personal projects? Anything you want to talk about? Um, no, not at this time. I would. The only thing I would say is, you know, if uh, you're interested in in science in general, uh, not just space, um, you know, go to nasa.gov and and you know you'll you'll be able to see all the different um, projects that we have which is a ton of them. So, um, you know, any, any advice for like a young person that wants to kind of get in a similar track to you or, or go down that road? I mean, I know that's a, that could be um, a whole other talk, but just, just like a quick one. Yeah. Just a quick one. I would say that, um, you know, if, if you want to get in the same track that I am in, um, be open-minded about, um, what, you know, the input that people provide you with. Right. So, um, you know, no matter what your degree is, right. Obviously I'm, Mine's a technical degree, so if, if you really want to be doing what I'm doing, you're more than likely going to be doing a technical degree as well. Um, but be open-minded and be open to criticism, right? Um, do not go in thinking that you know it all, that you've just gotten out of school and you know the, the latest tech, uh, which <laughs> you know, this, this 30 or 40 or 50-year-old person might not know about. Um, but they've got a lot of experience that would help you out a lot along with you knowing that technology that you know, right? So um, that's, that's my, that would be my advice. And that, that'll get anybody, uh, you know, uh, ahead of, you know. In, in, I couldn't agree more. Hey, if you like what you just saw, please smash that like button, click subscribe. It's your support that'll let us keep doing this. We can improve our production value, start releasing these more often. The more people like it, the more of these we're gonna put out. So if you like it, subscribe, tell your friends, Thank you so much. You're the best.